good day to you it is a glorious day here beautiful sunshine but the temperatures have been really really low now i ran a poll on my community page and the poll was just asking people about their thoughts on various videos too and this one actually won so this is a vlog and i have to say it's actually quite a relief to do something that's pretty easy for me to do in fact so if you're quite happy to put up with my ums as as um, plenty of dodgy jump cuts then come along with me and we will have a good look around all the plants in the greenhouse today and i'll make a separate video for the hothouse so let's dive in and we are in okay i've not done this for ages this vlog style of video so i'm quite looking forward to doing it i hope you do enjoy it if you're in a rush if you're in a hurry then this probably isn't the video for you because as i said previously it's it's going to be lots of ums, ers and ahs. I'm just kind of making it up as I go along and sometimes that's quite refreshing and I know some people do enjoy that style of video as well and I'm trying my best to give everybody a little bit of what they want. Now I think what we'll start with is first of all my health. One or two people have been asking about that after the operation I had in, where are we now? We're in December now, mid-December. I'm filming, filming this on the, I don't even know what date it is. Is it the 14th? maybe 13th 13th of december something like that roughly um i never write it anymore so i don't i don't really remember what date we're up to i know we're kind of halfway through december so that the operation was around late september so i think it was first of october when i had it or something like that so we're two and a bit months on two and a half months on and yeah i'm feeling great i'm feeling much much better and in actual fact i'm better than i have been for the last few years i actually enjoyed get this succulent fillet steak it's the first time i've had fillet steak i've actually had three since um, <laughs> eating meat was not something that i could do and i'm really happy to be able to do that and get my iron levels back up again and hopefully that will reduce the palpitations and everything else that goes along with that um, you know just just as a consequence of not being able to eat that's all that was so yeah I'm feeling much much better I don't know how long this will last for it could be a few short years it could be many years nobody knows do they um, obviously I've been through all this with the adhesions one operation leads to more ad adhesions which leads to more adhesions which leads to more blockages um, so the chances are pretty likely that I'll have it again but I'll take what I've got for now and just try and not think about it because you know it might not happen you know I keep thinking to myself well the other areas of my abdomen didn't get any adhesions it was just this one particular area so you know if the other areas might not have got any then this might not get any so who knows i'm just trying to be optimistic so plants that's what we're here for so as i said earlier if you're not in a rush and you want to kind of sit back and relax and just enjoy talking about tropical plants then you're in the right place so grab a coffee uh, pause the video although don't pause it because that'll ruin my retention figures more about that later um, so do whatever you want to do obviously um, we'll just have a look round. now you might notice as i whiz round here i have actually made a few notes just to remind me what i want to discuss my pride and joy has gone the mandevilla which filled that gap and which i've pointed at on many occasions i've not got rid of it i've just pruned it down I've pruned it right down here just below the streptocarpus there so what happened with that nothing that i didn't expect actually i had my temperatures down to seven degrees celsius i've actually caved in now and put it back to about 12 roughly um, and the main reason for that was well the only reason for that was to try and save costs and i've just paid where are we now well i've just said we're in the middle of the month i've just paid an extra 400 pounds on my utility bill uh, on top of the 250 that i've paid for the month already and we're only halfway through so that gives you an idea of what it's going to be by the end of this month i mean it, ha it has been a really really cold spell much colder than i remember for a long time i think 2010 was the last time we had it as cold as this it's actually been down to as measured with my car minus 10 one particular morning when i got up and was uh, taking my daughter to school so yeah it's been really really bad and that's mostly the reason for uh, that huge cost and obviously the bills are very the cost of them of, of electricity is really really high at the moment and gas but more so electricity it seems so yeah around the villa what happened was obviously once it gets below and this is this particular uh, species mandevilla sanderi synonym diplodenia 
um, and different hybrids do different things but this particular one does not like to be below 15 mostly and I've always kept it and there it is in the corner there I've always kept it at 18 degrees Celsius and it was you know it pretty much flowered for me right through the year I tended to have like January February time when it didn't flower and then it came back into flower again uh, below 15 that's when I start to get loads of yellowing leaves and they drop now because it's an, an ev so-called evergreen plant um, you do get yellowing leaves you know leaves don't last forever they do tend to die off at that kind of uh, lower end of the season but I was getting an awful lot and rather than just keep trying to tidy up after them I thought well look well let's just cut it back I still have the foil insulation if you remember I was talking about that I was actually due I'd earmarked for myself that particular weekend when I went into hospital to actually install the foil insulation now I can't install I can't start again I told you this was just rough and ready I can't install the foil insulation if I've got climbers all the way up here so they had to go uh, while I do that now I'm going to wait for a milder period because obviously everything's got to come out of here and I don't want them to get frosted at the moment the temperatures outside are still below zero during the day so I can't put any of these outside uh, once we will get some milder temperatures it can very often be like you know 10 to 15 on Christmas day you just don't know that will be the kind of uh, temperature when I can get stuck into this so I might well be doing it on Christmas day who knows Okay, so let's talk about a few more plants. Now it has been a month for pruning and I've done loads of pruning over in the hothouse. I've done loads of pruning in here. The, basically things had just got so big and so lush. And even though lush is great, lush means uh, mess and mess means pests. And my goodness, I've had more than my first year this year. These impatiens are looking brilliant. Look at them. I'm really, really impressed. I've still got they almost look chlorotic you know it's it's kind of like a, uh, the spider mite symptoms as well but since I've been using the sulfur the growth has been brilliant I mean you can see the new leaves here see how the new leaves are kind of a much deeper green much more glossy compared to the older yellowing one that one in fact actually is looking a little bit worse for wear because I forgot to water it and it did wilt uh, which is a story we'll come back to because that's happened uh, with rather disastrous consequences to another plant but we'll come back to that again so yeah I'm really pleased with that I know it's not going to win any prizes but compared to what it's done so far all year it's limped along and now both of them are looking like really good strong plants ready to do uh, the thing in the coming season uh, both my Phragmopediums, the Bessii down here is about to bloom and the Ainsworthii is about to bloom. The temperatures are holding them back a little bit uh, but again these were affected by the mites so they're going to be a very welcome sign. I'm expecting this one actually to come into bloom well she should do it by December shouldn't it unless it blasts it certainly should do you can see the difference between the older leaves like the mite ravaged leaves compared to the newer younger leaves we have got an orchid show this weekend it's actually our Christmas Christmas meal so I'm looking forward to that that's in a couple of days time uh, not right away today Friday so not actually tomorrow that should be interesting so talking about forgetting to water things my glorious Terrace Quadriorita that's what's left of it oh dear <laughs> not looking too good so what actually happened to that I mean it was looking brilliant it was in fact I'll stick a photo up of it it was this great big thing loads of bronze new fronds coming on it looked wonderful uh, one of my favorite plants in the greenhouse at the moment and I left it one day too long and the whole thing shriveled uh, I did water it but it was just too late the fronds as you tend to find with these kind of tropical ferns the fronds once they've gone they've gone and um, I've had this this stage before actually where I've cut everything off and it'll come back I'm not worried about that so Nepenthes Rebecca Soper up here I think these are due for a prune as well so this one over here which looks a bit rubbish until you realize that we can follow it round and it's actually going all the way up there and all the way up there now in the past I have pruned it back and what you tend to find that when you prune the penthes you get these basal shoots coming at the bottom which is in my case anyway something to be aimed for because the basal shoots tend to be in my particular situation anyway uh, much more likely to produce new pictures so I might cut that off 
um, and it is kind of interfering with that one over there and that one does have a basal shoot on it so you can see there and it's got lots of new pictures coming some fairly nice pictures on there still not had any uppers on it i don't think yet you can see they're kind of becoming a little bit more like uppers with that bendy one at the top there and they are a little bit smaller uh, a few more nepenthes to look at these are doing all right I tend to find that once the heat of the summer's gone, then they come, they really kind of come back with full force. Uh, they, they like that, of course, they love light, light more than anything. These ones anyway, these are Highland Nepenthes, so these don't really like the heat. Um, some nice colours on that one. It's not very big, but some nice colours on it. And this one is really taking off now, actually. So what's this one? Uh, Cross Ventrata got some nice new pictures coming on it you can see all the gooey uh, nectar on there that's not been watered it's just that's just what they produce it's very sticky so yeah over there we've got my accident and emergency I'm going to talk about that again in a little while down here we've got all my Tradescanti, or not all my Tradescanti, but some of them. This, these really are just stock pots. I just use these to top up some of my others. These are looking nice and glossy. Again, I expect this was something to do with the mites. I don't think they were spider mites because I couldn't see anything on them, but I think they did have some kind of mites because whether it was just a change in the climate that happened, you know, the seasons changing, but they suddenly came into massive growth and it coincided with me using the sulfur hot box. So winter tidying of Streptocarpus. Now my Streptocarpus were just in a state. In fact, I'll show you what they look like. The kind of thing that the temperature does to Streptocarpus is like that. They're the ones that I haven't yet done. Now you can see how they just look ugh, horrible and I had that whole area down there uh, just looking dreadful while I got round to actually doing something with them. So these have all been tidied up, believe it or not. Not those, those are still in bloom, so I've left those. But I have tidied them up and what that involves, and I have got videos on this uh, where I've kind of painstakingly gone through what I do. But basically, if it's ready for repotting, obviously I up pot it. Uh, once they're in this kind of size, I don't really want to repot them any bigger than that, so they don't get repotted. But it's a case of tidying them up and thinning them out. So if you've got loads and loads of rosettes, I tend to thin out the rosettes so there's no more than about three or four in a pot. I take all the old woody uh, spent bloom stalks off, that all needs to go any really yellow horrible yucky leaves i mean it's not rocket science it just really tidies them up and makes them look better ready for the next coming season so some of them are still in bloom believe it or not even though we're halfway through december so you can see over here we've got still lots of blooms going on with streptocarpus and you know, I'm quite happy to leave them until they're ready to be tidied up. If they want to wait a bit longer and give me a few more blooms, who am I to argue with that? I have got a few that I've done already, a few that I've kind of tidied up and cut down. And I don't have any qualms about cutting leaves off like across. When they get so huge and you get massive leaves like, you know, 30 centimetres long all the way over here and they're all touching each other. It's fine in the middle of summer, but at this time of the year, they just really need to be pulled back. So like this one, for example, so all these old spikes that you can see down here, all the mouldy bits and uh, things with botrytis on them, you can see all that will have to come off. There may possibly be too many rosettes in there. All these leaves will be cut back so that you're left with something like that. Nice and small and compact and tidy, ready for the new growth when that happens next year. And when that happens, then I'll give them a little bit of feed and start the process off again as the temperatures rise. So that's Streptocarpus, that's what I do with mine. Just purely my own thing that I started doing and it does seem to work, it seems to bring them back nicely again. I expect that if you've got them in the house, in fact the ones that I have got in the house, they don't tend to go quite as yellow because they've still got the temperatures. You know, mine in here were going down to six or seven degrees and that really did do the leaves in. It didn't kill them, they can go down to about five, uh, not frost, frost will kill them, 
but they certainly didn't show the same signs of distress in the house they just finished blooming and I do find that they need a rest even and these are supposed to go all year these crystallized but I even find they need a rest as well that'll probably hang on right till the end uh, after all these are finished blooming but I'll give it a break as well I've no reason to keep it going forevermore a couple of new arrivals in the greenhouse here so I've got my one and only olive tree here which limps along I don't know if you've heard me mention in the past but I don't have a south facing garden I don't have any sunshine so even though I've had this probably about 10 years that's the that's the size of it it's never gone any bigger it's just the same in fact I actually lost a lot of it this year it had just a, it was actually a standard and it had like a mop head and I pruned it back because it was just all the leaves were dying on it it wasn't happy and since I've done that I've got all this nice new growth so I'm really happy with that this is my false banana my uh, and set i can't remember the rest of it but what i've done with that this year i've actually repotted it and i've put it into a smaller pot now the reason for that was not for anything horticultural other than to make sure that there were no pests in the pot so i took it out of its larger pot i chopped all the roots off really chopped not all of them but i really kind of shaved it down so that it fit in a smaller pot put new compost in so I've done two things there haven't I I've made sure that there are no pests and I've also made sure that it's a lot lighter uh, a lot easier to fit in the greenhouse and it's responded by beginning to grow again that's only come while it's been in the greenhouse just a little word about this asparagus fern here which is shooting things in all sorts of directions fronds and well, they're not really fronds are they I know it's not a proper fern but I quite like it it's a nice bit of greenery and it, it seems to be climbing up this little area here so what I did here I had a big long shoot here and um, because it was going too far and I, it was getting in the way I chopped it back but normally with any kind of plant you normally expect new growth at the bottom well what did I get these side shoots from right from where I've chopped it off I've begun to extend so it's kind of bushing it out but not in the place where I would expected now I would have expected it to bush it out further down uh, but that's just something a little point there if you want to try that these are actually really prickly I don't know if anybody's ever uh, noticed that on those not something I've not really touched it that much but the it's the kind of like underneath each of these shoots and they point downwards and I'm sure if I reach back into my not very reliable memory it uses that to climb so if they point downwards they kind of climb up things can't they so maybe that's something to bear in mind maybe you could climb it up a little trellis there and see how that goes so yeah just a little word about the asparagus fern so a little word about pelagoniums now i think i've had some kind of disease or i've got some kind of disease and it's worrying me a little bit now i've just got four here but the same thing is happening to all of them some of them are practically defoliated like this one here was one of my favorites and look i've not got hardly any leaves left on it because i keep pulling the ones off that keep getting these see these like brownie ready marks on the leaves and you can see it's probably a bit better on this one it starts like that and it's like a red spot like a like a brownie ready spot and it just spreads over the leaf and eventually you know the leaf dies or i pull it off first which is usually what happens since i got the sulfur hot box that has really slowed down which would make me think that it's maybe some kind of fungal thing whether i'll totally get rid of it i don't know i have another one over here again this one was really defoliating fairly quickly again it seemed to have slowed down so i don't know whether i'm going to lose them all or not i hope not because i really like pelagoniums and my only issue with pelagoniums is that this greenhouse situation is the worst possible environment for pelagoniums even though i love them it's again it's one of those things where i'm trying to force a plant to grow in a place that it doesn't want to grow so you look at this one this was a, a trailer again only left with a few leaves but i'm happy that they've actually stopped the rate of of loss and I think that is something to do with the hot box, which would make you think that it's not a bacterial disease, it's a fungal disease. I don't think the sulfur stops 
the bacterial diseases. But I had sprayed them all. I'd sprayed them all with a fungal uh, preventer, if for want of a better word, with a, with a fungal spray, uh, an antifungal spray, and it didn't make any difference. I don't know. I don't know what the reason is, but they do seem to have... Uh, certainly slowed down the rate of loss. That one's okay at the moment, seems to be. Just expose another little yellow leaf there. So yeah, as I was saying, this, the greenhouse here is very, very humid. It's all closed up. I've got the doors closed. There's a lot of water in the air. There's a lot of water everywhere. And there's not much air movement. I've got my fans, but there's really not enough. I could probably do with another couple of fans to get more ventilation going. What do pelagoniums like? Well, they like it bright and airy and lower humidity. They want to be fairly dryish. You know, I'm not saying they don't like humidity, but if they if you have got it, they want it to be uh, thoroughly ventilated around them. Very, very airy. Not in a place where all the plants are all squished up against them. That is not good for them and that is not what they've got here unfortunately they've got the exact opposite i'm forcing them to grow in the place that they don't want to grow but i like them what can i do i really love them don't want to get rid of them in fact i'd like a few more <laughs> so let's move on to the cyclamen and i recently made a cyclamen video it doesn't appear that that many of my subscribers are that keen on cyclamen which a shame from my point of view because I absolutely love them and of course I'm going to still grow them and people will find those videos in time hopefully so again this is one of my favorites this huge one here I don't think this particular bloom is how it should look they should be like swept back like that up there and I think what happened is I sprayed this earlier on before I got this sulfur hot box and it's mutated and I've had to cut a few of the blooms off it and there's a few more coming there so hopefully in January that will really come into its own that is how it should look you can see that see the sepals uh, around the side of the bloom are not overly large this is how it shouldn't look with huge sepals and I think looking at them quite a lot of them have huge sepals We'll see anyway, we'll see, because it's one of my biggest tubers. Look, it's a huge tuber. I don't think it'll spoil it for next year. I just think I might miss a year with it. Um, now that I've got the sulfur hot box, hopefully I won't ever need to spray them again. This was a new one with the fringed edges. I mean, these blooms are going over now. I'm hoping there's, you know, there's quite a lot more coming down there. We've got the bicolor there, another new one. And this one is one of the first ones to come from the hybridizers that actually has a scent. They have a scent in, in nature, uh, but it was bred out of them over the years. And they're be beginning to realize the importance of having scent, uh, and that one's coming back, thankfully. This one seems to have longer leaves than blooms. Well, the blooms are coming, it's a nice one. Another nice, see these, at first glance, they look the same, but they're not, they're slightly different, uh, slightly different pinks. That one's kind of a bit more rough and ready, isn't it? A bit more uh, striated. Whereas that one is a beautiful shape, really nice whirly gig shape. Look at that, that's gorgeous. Can't tell me that's not, na that's not nice, that is beautiful. That one doesn't seem to have anything at the moment. Sometimes, apparently you can over fertilize them. Uh, now that was in a new pot, it, it did have new media so it could well be that I shouldn't have put a tablet in there I think I might have done uh, by accident it has got lots and lots of little bloom buds you can see down there so hopefully it will come I don't really mind if it comes a bit later if it comes in January that's fine you know whenever it comes I'm happy to see them uh, these again loads I mean, look at all that loads and loads to come loads to come there looking fabulous I really like these leaves on this one so if you don't grow cyclamen, well, you're missing a treat. They're great for the house. If you live in a tropical country, maybe don't bother. But if you live somewhere temperate, over winter is the time to grow them. That's what they like. They like temperatures between 15 and 18 degrees Celsius. Lots of rooms in a house have those kind of temperatures in, in temperate countries. So, you know, they're ideal, absolutely ideal for that. Of course, yes, they do like bright lights. But I made another video on that, so I'm not going to go into that for too long, hopefully. My one and only Symbidium, with a ridiculously long name, which I'm not going to go into. 
I really love Cymbidium, but gosh, they take up a lot of space, don't they? Um, I should have more. Maybe I should grow them in the conservatory. That would be ideal for them because they don't mind the cold. That is desperate for a repot. Look at all the dead spikes, not spikes, uh, pseudo bulbs at the back there. That definitely wants a repot. Actually, I do have another Cymbidium that Ed gave me. Ed's orchids gave me. Um, that's down there. I've had that a few years now, about three years, and it does have a new growth. Maybe I'll get some blooms on that at some point. So what else have we got to show over here? My Oncidium Sotoanum, nearly lost that through mites. Looking great. Have a sniff of that. Gorgeous. And it's got another couple of spikes there ready to come. Um, it was totally devoid of roots, and yeah, the mites got at it. And what I did with it is what I've done with quite a number of my orchids. I'll just take you to A&E over here, accident and emergency. And I've basically just resting them on some moss so I can keep a real close eye at what's going on like that. So I can see whether I'm getting new roots or not. And I can really make sure that that dries out. Um, and don't water them until it dries out. And you know what? To my great surprise, it's worked. I'll just show you some of the ones that's actually worked with. My Oncidium Twinkle over here. I've lost a number of these through mites, didn't realise it. And now I have some budding, well budding as in small Oncidium Twinkle there, which I don't pull those out anymore because they've rooted down into the moss. So for me, and I know lots of people over in the UK say it doesn't work for them, but for me, it seems to be working the moss. I know I'll have to change it, I know it breaks down, but it just gives me something that bark doesn't. I find that the orchids don't want to drop the roots into that bark. Certain kinds of orchids, obviously not all orchids. This one over here, I can't remember what it's called. I'm not even going to tell you what it's called, don't want to waste your time. But again, it lost every single leaf, and I know it's not looking brilliant still, but we have, oh we did have, yeah, well, there's a new new growth coming there. We did have some roots coming on it, and I can't see any now. I think that actually, I think those white ones, not the ones with like the central bits sticking out, they're obviously dead. I'm sure it had some. Hmm. <laughs> Rewind that. <laughs> it's worked for most of them. Maybe not working for that one at the moment. Um, I'm sure it'll come back. Um, I would show you more, but I don't want to make a fool of myself. But it does seem to be, for the ones that I've looked at anyway, it's worked so far. As soon as the temperatures drop, that's when everything becomes more tricky, isn't it? Um, you know, I'd love to keep it at, at 15 in here all year round, and I'd love to have the sun on it all year round. But of course, then it wouldn't be a challenge, would it? You've seen my award winner, so that's going, that's going over quite rapidly. Let's have a look at some of these Nepenthes, because these are looking wonderful. These have put, this one especially, this one is uh, Lowy Eye Cross with Ventricosa. It's putting loads of pictures out. Uh, it's probably going to need repotting, actually. I'm probably getting another couple of years out of it. They're very slow growers, but this one is growing particularly quickly. It always amazes me how they feel, they feel like cardboard. It's like somebody's you know manufactured it absolutely glorious love it and i would love more but god they're so dear have you seen how expensive they are in the uk they're absolute fortune i suppose that also makes them a little bit more um what's the word desirable gosh can't believe it took me 10 minutes to come up with that word makes them more desirable it's, <laughs> it's getting late in the day um, so this one is, I don't know, Berkeyi is it? Is it Berkeyi or is it Gaia? It's Gaia. I'll get these two mixed up. So this one is now attaching itself up here and it's looking really good. It's throwing new pictures out. I'm really happy with the colours on it. It's happy. What more could you ask for? And at this time of year, I always spray them with a dilute orchid feed because I've seen loads of people argue over this online, but I always go back to the two uh, carnivorous plant bibles. I can't remember who's actually written them. 
I've shown them before on the channel, but they say that Nepenthes, unlike a lot of other carnivorous plants, actually benefit from a foliar feed. Or if you wish, you can feed them straight down into the roots with dilute orchid feed. I do it. It doesn't kill them. It does seem to make them pitcher in my experience. This one is Berkii, not an expensive Nepenthes but as you can see, a glorious one nonetheless. I really want anything with Vichii in it. I would absolutely love a Nepenthes Vichii, but I don't think unless I get my hand in my pocket, I'm gonna get anyone to swap me something. I ask loads of times and nobody ever comes up with anything. And I can't blame them because of the slow growing and they're really expensive. Some more orchids back here. Oh, let's have a look at this one. So this one is Hardenbergia violacei. So there you go. Now. Not a great deal to look at, but the whole interesting point about this one is that it did nothing all year. I've actually had this since spring and it never moved. It had two leaves. Since I got the sulfur hot box, it's put some growth on. Why is that? Did it have mites? Has it been fertilized? I mean, I sprayed it, but nothing. The sulfur hot box has made it move. Both of these had the treatment with the sphagnum moss, and as you can see, they're now in full growth again, and I can't wait to see them. These are one of my, or well, this was one of my earliest purchases on Sidium Sweet Sugar. When was that one? 2020, no, that was repotting 2020. So I wonder when I actually bought that. I'm sure I bought it probably early 20, 2019, maybe, yeah, early 2019. Now I've got a Shari Baby back there. This, I think, I think, has it? No, no, I thought it had a spike on it, but it's not. It's just one of the old ones. That's a shame. Little word about uh, a begonia down here. So this Fuchioides, completely defoliated, not a single leaf on it. Look at it now. When did that happen? When I got the sulfur hot box. And just talking about other begonias that can cope with really low temperatures, this size Morier can also cope with low temperatures. Um, okay, it's not looking absolutely brilliant, but you know, we've had the temperatures down to six degrees in here and it's still going strong. So if you have low temperatures and you like begonias, maybe that's one to get. It has actually bloomed quite a lot actually, but I don't grow it for the blooms. I did have a go at pollinating it. I self-pollinated it in, into this particular one here. And I don't know if it's swollen. I don't really see as it's changed much, but it's stayed on, it's not gone off. So maybe I might get some little seeds from that. I am gonna have a go at sowing some begonia seeds. I've got uh, a friend in Australia, Les, who's very kindly offered to send me some seed and they are winging their way to me as we speak. Uh, my Dendrobium berryoda is gonna bloom, but it doesn't look like it's gonna do a lot. Again, another spider mite victimin. You can see the results of the spider mite. These are the newer leaves without the spider mite on, hopefully. Uh, over here, that's going to, that's growing really quick. So that's Pleurothalis restrepioides. And that too is really growing fast, much faster than it's ever grown all year. Again, possibly the season, but possibly something to do with the mites. So let's have a look over here at the final lot. What else have we got to look at? Oh, I didn't mention these. So these Tradescantia are over here, loads of pink on them. Uh, this was sold to me as Tradescantia tricolor minima, but I believe its real name is Tradescantia mundula lisa. That's the registered name. Tons of different variegation on there, but you do have to make sure you pinch out all the green, the pure green leaves, otherwise they soon take over and end up like this one, because that's exactly what that was. And that one wasn't pinched out, and these two were. Again, these are more that have come back since using the sulfur. So we've got a uh, Dendrobium densiflorum over here, and it's really time for its quiet, quiet moments, <laughs> its dry period. It has thrown a bit of a cane out. It's not massive, so it's not exactly thriving as I've got it growing on this stick here. I don't think that's the ideal place for it. I have seen them growing in baskets better, but it's, it's okay, it's, it's alive. And 
I, I haven't actually watered it for a while. I've left it for about a month and then they looked like they were getting a bit desiccated so I give it some water and that's, that's my approach to this. I know they're supposed to have a winter rest but I think why let them get really, really desiccated? I don't think that would happen in the wild, would it? Perhaps you can help me on that one. Uh, this one is, whatever the other one is from Densiflorum, I always get them, I always forget the other one. Uh, Thirsiflorum, that's it, I didn't forget it this time. That's got a better cane on it, hasn't it? A better size cane compared to the rest of the plants. Um, this one is Victoria Regina, not really done much. I'm not sure I've got the right conditions for that one. So what have we got over here? Some more Nepenthes here. Um, it's getting bigger, getting bigger. Uh, what else? Uh, nothing spectacular really. I did lose, I think, one of my big Drosera. That was Dichotoma giant. That one is Binata variety multifida. I think it's that one. When it got really, really cold, they all died off. Uh, but I can see some little nubbins down there. I don't think it's dead. I think it'll come back. Pinguicula there, looking okay. Um, quite happy with the way the Cephalotus follicularis have gone. Remember, that was a division from that. These do get some fungal issues occasionally. You can see like bits of yellow dust on there. Um, that disappears when I spray it. The spray seems to work really well on those. Um, we've got my... King Sunju there, that's, I'm really looking forward to that next year, that should be good. A few more Capensis there, and these really haven't done much this year, they bloomed brilliantly uh, when I first got them and then they just kind of went downhill. Uh, we're going to get some blooms over on the Mastervalia Ignea. I had one plant, I think it was that one, another Mastervalia, and this one Ambilis, Amabilis. And this one had probably about 20 bloom spikes on and every single one blasted. It was a disaster. No idea why. Nice and cool for them. You know, not in the heat, not in the direct sun. Who knows? These things happen, don't they, with orchids, with plants in general. Obviously, something wasn't quite right there for them. Well, you're looking at here my Cellogeny speciosa. And I have actually repotted that now. It, you know how they get to this point where they've got this creeping rhizome and they get to a point, not just this particular one, but lots of orchids with creeping rhizomes, when you have some dead area at the end at the size of a pot and then they're trying to climb out the other side with all the new bits. Well, I've cut off the old bits and I've repotted it in exactly the same media and it, it had that many roots, the whole thing was just like a lump and it was very, very difficult to get into and break into. And you'd have sworn that I would kill it by doing that, but it seems quite happy. And I really wanted to get in there and get all the old moss out and all the old media before it started to get too acidic. And I think over time, the, the plants, even though it has produced some blooms for me this year, it's not produced as many. And this is what happens, isn't it, with those these kind of orchids uh, that are that kind of a growth habit. Over time, uh, if they've got the same moss, the same bark, they gradually decline. So I bit the bullet and really went for it and it seems okay. At the moment, <laughs> these things very often take a while to show any kind of reaction. Another Tradescantia zebrina up here, now believe it or not, that is all the same plant. Look at the variation. So you've got that almost just two different colours of green and then you've got green with the purples and some really dark leaves, just very, very different. I mean, look at that leaf, that leaf there compared to that one. I mean, wow, how different. And that's what's so attractive to me anyway about these plants. And my very big one at the back here, one that was sold to me as Tradescantia Red Jewel, which I know if I look it up, it'll have a different name to that. But, you know, I always forget to water it. I just totally neglect it. And all I do is cut bits off it. And it's still going strong. That's two and a half years in the bag. And it's still going strong. Hardly any of those dead leaves that you get when they're only rooted from one point. Remember, this is actually rooted for, from several points. I only did it once and that was it, that was enough. So we're nearly at the end and if you hung on so far you're doing really well, give yourself a pat on the back. I just wanted to talk about the channel in general. 
I'm at a bit of a quandary with it. I really don't know what to do. I have got to a certain number of subscribers and I have tried to improve the videos as we've gone on. On say my last 10 videos, I've tried to answer a specific question. I've tried to make them entertaining. I've tried to cut out all the fluff and not just ramble like I am doing today. But yet yeah, I go and do a poll and what do people ask for? The rambly style video, which I'm quite happy to do because frankly, it's much, much easier for me. It's no research. I don't have to write a script. I don't have to spend hours editing it. It's much, much easier. Is that what people want? Do people want, you know, do different people want different things? I really don't know. And I'm, I'm not making any profit. I'm still making a loss. If this was a business, I'm making a loss. I will, of course, carry on with the plants because that's the hobby. And I would do that whether YouTube was around or not but I'm in a quandary and I don't really, I'm not saying this as clickbait. I'm not saying this as, you know, people do this, don't they? And I'm not saying that I'm not guilty of doing that. You do whatever you can to get people to click and to watch your videos. Uh, but in this case, I've not put it on as a title or a thumbnail. I'm just tagging it onto the end of a video to see if anybody who actually got this far has any suggestions because I'd like to know that I'm heading in the right direction. I'd like to know that I'm still going to be making videos that people want to watch. But what do you think? Do you think things are going fine? Or do you think you'd like to see it go in a particular direction? Is there something that I'm not covering that people would like to see? I can't say it hasn't crossed my mind that I just don't have enough stock maybe you've seen everything so what else is there to see maybe i'm not young enough good looking enough dynamic enough humorous enough <laughs> you name it and i you know i will accept that I, I can't change i am what i am and um yeah there are people that I, personally i would rather look at maybe that's it i don't know what do you think is maybe you don't even know maybe you just watch a video and if you like it you like it and if you don't you don't and that's probably me to be honest other people put posts like this on and they obviously go through something similar and i i don't know i don't i don't look at them and have a suggestion for them really i just think well you know if i'm attracted to the video i watch it and if i enjoy it i click like i might comment and if i don't i don't i, I move on to to the next thing um I don't know, I'd like some kind of feedback, but I really doubt whether I'll get any. Um, <laughs> but it's worth a try, isn't it? It's worth asking. You never know, something might spark something in my head, maybe something that might uh, give me an idea of where to head to next with it. So anyway, I've said my piece, and what I'm going to do is do something similar over in the hot house. Now that is at 18 degrees, so things are looking a lot more lush as you can imagine, than they are over here. That's where I tend to keep these so-called, inverted commas, house plants. And that's perhaps where many of my subscribers uh, were their first love lies. Lovely little dendrobium there. Now, by the way, this is the only one that I've managed to keep. All the rest died with mites. Uh, but I may well get some more once funds allow, once I've finished paying for all this electricity. Um, I will get some more orchids and start again because I lost so many and I'm certain it was mites in for the main you know maybe there's one or two that it was cultural but I think it was mainly the mites because as soon as I've got this hot box things have really changed for the better but of course winter's come and that's made things worse again and that you're just fighting one thing against another okay I'll stop there I'll stop rambling see this is why I write a script sometimes because it stops me rambling so hopefully I will see you over on the vlog in the hot house let me know what you think of this give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it it all helps it really really does and for now gosh 47 minutes yikes i'll see you on the next one hopefully fingers crossed bye